Tifu by making everyone in the elevator think that they were going to die. Alright, so this is an old story, but when I found this sub, I had to share. When I used to be a Muslim, I had an app on my phone that would sound the Adan, when it was time for prayer. I was on holiday the day of the fuck up. I got into a hotel elevator, this was shortly after the Paris attacks. There were roughly six people in it. Then the Adan for prayer started blasting from my phone. For those who don't know, the Adan starts with Allahu Akbar. When that blasted from my phone, the elevator went into mass hysteria, people were crying, screaming, another man tackled me and held me down. I had to explain to them that I wasn't a terrorist. Then everyone just started laughing. I understand that everyone may think this isn't a fuck up, but I feel like I shouldn't have had my Adan blasting like that after an incident like the Paris attacks. El, doctor, Adan blares in elevator, everyone thinks I'm about to blow up the elevator. Edit, holy butternut butternut, this post has blown up. Thanks to the people who awarded me silvers and gold. I need to clear some stuff up first. When I meant laugh, ick, that segment was worded horribly. I'm not referring to full out laughter. Just some chuckling and light laughing if that's even a thing. Please stop with all these questions about my religion, let me make this clear. If you message me about my religion, I will not respond. So stop. And one gripe, a large amount of negative comments, in most of them the person commenting doesn't seem to understand the full magnitude of the incident and why it provoked that response. Please take the effort to cheesecake understand what I wrote first smile. And to all the haters who are send messages to me calling this story fake, I really don't care if you think my story is real or not. I'm not here to argue about whether this actually happened. Back in the 90s when the World Trade Center in NYC was first bombed, truck bomb in the garage for people that don't remember, I was doing work for a company in one of the towers. It was only a few days after the bombing so to help lift everyone's spirits I decided to bring a bunch of brownies in with me. I had them in an airtight metal tin in a large duffel bag full of paperwork. Express elevators in the towers were very fast and would make your ears pop from the rapid pressure change. Apparently it also makes airtight metal brownie tins pop. The tin opened with a loud metal bang and everyone in the elevator jumped. I don't recall if anyone started crying but I know everyone was freaked out. After explaining it was just the brownie tin I ended up sharing them with the other people in the elevator to help calm everyone's nerves. This story reminds me of the helicopter scene from the Dictator movie. Doctor, I have some Aladdin news, and some Aladdin news. Patient, Aladdin news. Tackling this guy in the elevator is the most Michael Scott thing I've heard this week. I would think more Dwight Schrutt. I love that the elevator went from terror to laughter in seconds. And that hop didn't think everybody was a cheesecake for assuming they were all going to die. This is a great story. Hilarious but also sprinkled with sadness. Trying times we do live in. Can I offer you a nice egg? Tifu by going blind and posting in r slash pics. Tifu by going blind and posting in r slash pics. A friendly redditor you slash Kevin Dave Bob. This is certainly a Tifu and it all just happened so I'm still feeling pretty terrible about it. I have a rare disease called Usher syndrome that is causing me to go blind and deaf. One of the ways I cope with having this disease is by traveling whenever I can to create visual memories before I go blind. I went to Iceland to try to see the northern lights. I can't I can't even begin to describe the feeling of actually being able to see the northern lights. I didn't know if it would be too late for me to see them. I really wanted to share my story about going blind and seeing the northern lights, hoping to generate awareness for Usher syndrome. Only having a phone camera and being a very amateur photographer, I certainly can't capture the beauty and experience of witnessing the lights. I was able to find a public use image on the internet that would properly convey my story and experience. The photo has been linked so many times that I didn't spend time searching for the original source, you can see where this is going. Dot. With my genuine caption, generic photo, and source to my story and blog, no ads, in the comments, I posted in r slash pics. I chatted with a few kind redditors about my story and was really happy to see people learning about Usher's syndrome. Then I went to sleep. Well, all hell broke loose. My post made it to the front page of r slash all. Number one in fact. I woke up to thousands of hurtful messages and comments, calling me a liar and telling me I don't have my disease, 
Redditors telling me they're happy I'm going blind if it is true, that I should kill myself, etc. There were some way worse ones I won't write here. I wish the mods took my post down while I was sleeping but it made it to the front page and stayed up for some reason despite Reddit telling me I was a fraud. It then got posted to r slash quit your bullshit where I got even more hate. I didn't say it was my picture, but I didn't credit the photographer. I seriously banana up. Can't even tell you guys how upset all of this made me. Living with Usher syndrome is not easy. There is no cure and it's terrifying losing both my vision and my hearing. My vision especially. I want nothing more than to try to raise awareness for Usher syndrome to discover a cure. Not just for myself but for everyone else who also has to live with this rare disease. I was so focused on my mission to raise awareness and share my story, I didn't make the effort to credit the photographer the way I should have. I cheesecake up Reddit. I'm getting so much hate now, even outside of Reddit from people finding me on my blog and other social accounts just to attack me. I'm sad that my post which intended to raise awareness for Usher syndrome turned into fuel for such negativity. We have too much negativity in this world and it's got to stop at some point. Thank you to everyone who was understanding and realized I made a mistake. Thank you Luke Stackpool for making your beautiful photo free for the public to use. I'm sorry for not taking the time to find you and credit you before. Your entire portfolio is stunning. From the bottom of my heart, I am sorry for misleading everyone and not posting correctly on r slash pics. Really did coconut up though. TLDR, I tried to raise awareness for Usher syndrome by posting a picture on r slash pics and failing to credit the photographer, Luke Stackpool. My post made it to the front page and Reddit now hates me. Edit, a nice Redditor, you slash show Mike and Ralika, suggested I share the non-profit that donates to Usher syndrome research so here you go. No need to click on it if you don't want to, it just takes you to the home page of this non-profit where you can learn more about it all, the Usher Syndrome Society. Also, full disclosure, I am on the board of directors and it's a pretty amazing organization. Not crediting a photo perceived to be original, especially on the popular r slash pics, is one thing, but getting hate and death threats is uncalled for. I am so sorry. I can't imagine what it feels like to be in your shoes. But I am so glad you got to see the lights. I went to your blog and read your posts. Look forward to following your travel smile X. I hope this post turns it around for you. I also hope this post gives the photographer the credit he deserves. Maybe we can turn this all into something positive. Trying to keep in mind that even the hurtful comments are coming from those who have now learned what Usher's syndrome is. What is this, a real F you on Tifu? Non-sexual and one we can see actual evidence for. What a strange day. Hey. Don't take it heavy upon yourself, most people are just itching for a reason to hate. Thank you. I just wish I had taken the time to find the photographer, none of this would be happening and I'd be creating positive conversations to help people learn more about Usher syndrome. It's hard to raise awareness for a rare disease and I'm sad I screwed up the opportunity. Up to you realize that your mistake there and posting about it here creates more awareness for Usher syndrome? I have never heard about it until now. Even if the haters think you're lying hopefully they know the disease is very real. You didn't cheesecake up they did by being like that don't let it bother you just think that on Tifu you have just spread awareness. Thank you, you're right. It is creating awareness in a roundabout way. My parents don't understand Reddit but I called them earlier to explain what happened and how upset I was with myself. They said, not knowing a thing about Reddit, if it means I've contributed to one more person in this world learning about this rare disease then something good has come from my mistake. I am trying to remind myself of that. Thank you for your support. Tifu by going to bed drunk. So last night I went out as I do every Saturday. When I got there I met up with my friends and started the night with a couple of beers, but ended the night with a bit more than I could handle. After that I went straight home and instantly fell asleep on the couch as I was trying to lay down on it just to rest for a moment. I woke up around 5 today and my right arm felt a bit weird. It was cold and I couldn't move it at all. At first I didn't panic at all because this has happened to me before because I 
sometimes sleep with my arm under my head. However today I slept with my arm under the side of my body, I got a little over 100 kilograms slash 220 pounds, with my back against the backrest of the couch. After about 20 minutes of relaxing and massaging the arm with little to no signs of improvement I woke up my parents and after I explained my situation, my mom, who is a doctor, suggested we go to the hospital immediately. During my two hour stay at the hospital the arm became significantly better as the time went on. However my fingers and my wrist, not nearly as much as fingers but it still felt a bit off, movement were problematic. After getting some tests done on the arm nerves, which I hope I never do again, I waited for the results. A little over an hour passes and the doctor came back with the results. It appears that I have done damage to a nerve with my hip while I was asleep and will most likely never be able to fully contract my right hand, I'm right handed, fingers. At first the doctor didn't know how I managed to fall asleep in such an uncomfortable position, but after I told him what I have done the night before he told me that it is a common thing, but that it usually doesn't end up this badly. Now I'm sitting at home writing this one handed on my phone contemplating life just because of two beers too much. TL, doctor, drunkenly fell asleep in a bad position and permanently damaged my arm nerves. Yeah, this should be a PSA. I often wake up with the pins and needles feeling in my arms because I too sleep with my arm under my head. And I often drink a lot of beers too. Scary stuff, hope it gets better. WTF dude I feel really sorry for you. That's so cheesecake up. I hope it gets better with time as I heard you can sometimes train your nerves. Thank you. I'm not that bummed out. It's not as severe but my grip strength is cheesecake. I can still hold a pencil but my phone would fall out of my hand if I used it for too long. It is actually called the Saturday Night Palsy and it's relatively common. It will get better as the nerve you injured is a peripheral nerve that is capable of slow regeneration. Big question is how much and how fast. You should see a neurologist for follow up and get a nerve conduction study after about 4 weeks to assess the extent of injury. It takes about this amount of time for the dead fibers and sheaths to degenerate and the changes to show up on electric testing. Source neurologist. Edit, as astutely pointed out below, the term Saturday Night Palsy classically refers to overnight compression injury of the radial nerve. There may be another nerve involved here, though op is vague about what arm movements are impaired and whether there's sensory deficit. And this is why I recommend him to see a neurologist, who takes careful history, does a physical exam, confirms the diagnosis and makes referrals. In most places getting an appointment takes some time, you can save some anxiety by getting one now, and not having to scramble if the weakness is still there days to weeks from now. Thank you for introducing me to this new fear, I now will hesitate every button at time I go to sleep. Okay, this isn't permanent usually. It typically takes a while to rehab and it's faster and more likely to be temporary if you try to rehab it. will be fine. The people who end up with real damage are the ones that don't rehab it. Son of an ER doctor. Not terribly uncommon.